What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Movie Quotes Jones review of Con Air. Con Air stars Nicolas Cage as terrible fake southern accent, John Malkovich as Cyrus Grissom. It has a laundry list of popular actors from the 90s to include John Cusack, Ving Rhames, Steve Buscemi, Cole Meany, Dave Chappelle, and even Danny Trejo. Damn! Alright, let's go through the plot. The movie begins at a dive bar in the South. I'm pretty sure it's in Alabama? Terrible fake southern accent and his wife are accosted by Booger, Skeeter, and Jeff here. And he ends up killing one of them in self-defense. He pleads guilty to manslaughter at the advice of his lawyer and is sentenced to, like, years in prison. I smell some bullshit with this ruling, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. During the opening credits, and uh, indeed Terrible Accent's entire prison term, we see him befriending Bubba from Forrest Gump, who slips him books from the prison library about skills like origami, learning to speak Spanish, and ostensibly workouts or yoga or some shit like that. It is a damn shame that none of these books seem to mention creating effective atmosphere through authentic dialects. Terrible accent, horrible accent, is eventually paroled. Hooray! So he's going to catch a ride on the movie's titular airplane. Well, actually, the plane is called the Jailbird. However, the plane also houses some of the most sinister, scary, and sadistic convicts in the United States as well. These convicts are being transferred to a new Supermax prison, as they're so dangerous that even a typical maximum security prison is not enough for infective incarceration. Cyrus the Charismatic turns out to have already orchestrated a plan to hijack the airplane, and the plan goes off without a hitch. <laughs> Pretty much. With Con Air now in the hands of the very cons it meant to imprison, Cyrus the Hilarious instructs the pilot to land at Carson City for a scheduled prisoner exchange, where they pick up completely unnecessary plot thread, played by an unconvincing Steve Buscemi, and where the authorities are first alerted to the hijacking. It's this part of the movie that gives us these Malkovich gems. Oh, Agent Malloy, I'm so sorry about your associate. Nothing is quite as sad as seeing a grown man pissing his pants. Oh, nothing makes me sadder than the agent lost his bladder in the airplane. <laughs> All right. Okay, this refers to a minor plot point that happened earlier in the movie where an undercover DEA agent tried to force Cyrus to give up. Terrible fake southern accent attempts to reason with the hot-headed and panicky agent, and Cyrus interprets this as an attempt to distract the agent, who is very quickly dispatched by, well, Cyrus. Nothing is quite as sad as seeing a grown man pissing his pants. Listen, of course I'm your puny fucking animal! I love how much fun Cyrus is having by fucking with this guy. Look at that smile and laughter. <laughs> Anyways, the plane continues to an abandoned airfield in the middle of but fuck nowhere. While its transponder has been removed and placed in a passenger craft, the DEA and marshals pursue the passenger plane while Cyrus the Bald contemplates his next move. It appears that his business partner, drug cartel Francis Sindino, was supposed to have a new plane all ready for them, but the plane never appears. Cyrus becomes suspicious of a double cross, a sentiment shared by terrible fake southern accent. Surely, though, a guy like Sandino can be trusted, right? WRONG! And not only is Sandino attempting to double cross Cyrus and company, the DEA and marshals are closing in on them, too. Cyrus quickly improvises a plan to deal with the impending threat. This is the boneyard. This is the hangar. This is our plane. What's that? That's a rock. Okay. While terrible fake Southern accent and John Cusack sabotage Sandino and the jailbird. Sorry, boss. 
But there's only two men I trust. One of them's me, the other's not you. Hey, I don't like him. If he speaks again, this is terminated. Whoa, whoa there, Cyrus. <laughs> I know he sucks, man, but let me just finish the review, okay? Yes. Conair is successfully able to take off, though with some damage. Cyrus is furious, having been double-crossed by Sendino, almost apprehended by the law, and now dealing with an obvious traitor. He threatens to kill Bishop, a female guard who terrible accent has protected throughout the entire movie. Cyrus sticks a gun in the guard's face and demands the traitor reveal himself. Bubba, whose entire character up to this point in the movie is that he is dying from diabetes, and hence I am now going to refer to as Diabetes Man for the rest of this review, makes believe like he is the traitor, and Cyrus promptly blasts him. You have been near death the entire trip? Yeah, motherfucker, it was me. No, he's, he's flipped out, man. He's nuts. It's pretty clever, huh, bitch? This leads to what I believe to be terrible Southern Accent's best acting in the entire film. It's pretty clever, huh, bitch? Jesus! We learn that Cyrus actually did know that terrible fake Southern Accent was a traitor. My daddy is coming home on July 14th. My birthday is July 14th. I'm going to see my daddy for the first time ever on July 14th. Make a move and the bunny gets it. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be an intense moment, okay? But Malkovich makes it immediately amusing with the psychopathic reading of this letter. It seems slightly out of place right after this. Jesus! But I think I know a way to make this work better. It's pretty clever, huh, bitch? Oh, Jesus! My daddy is coming home on July 14th! All right, there we go. So just as the bunny is about to get it, John Cusack and Cole Meany show up, guns a-blazing, and shoot the shit out of Con Air. During the chaos, terrible fake southern accent storms the cockpit and commands the pilot to land. The pilot explains that the plane is now too badly damaged to make it to the airport in Las Vegas, and that he's going to crash the plane right on the strip. The Las Vegas Strip, then, is where the movie's contrived, forced fourth act takes place. Oh, wait, did I say contrived, forced fourth act? I meant to say finale, which I can summarize here in one sentence. A bunch of complete nonsense action culminates with all the good guys winning and all the bad guys getting killed off one by one in true 90s action schlock fashion. It sucks. Just so as you know, Marshal Larkin, there's now three men I trust. Am I one of them? No, you fucking moron. He means Steve Buscemi. He means Cyrus. What the... All right. Terrible fake Southern Accent's wife and daughter arrive on the active crime scene. The family is whole again. Terrible fake Southern Accent's dialogue thankfully ends for good. He is never accused of manslaughter again, and they live happily ever after. The end. All right, with the plot covered, let's move on to the real reason you are probably here. The world-famous lists. One of the main things Con Air has going for it is that it's fun. Everybody on screen looks like they're having a great time. None of the actors or actresses take themselves too seriously. While the movie itself also doesn't take itself too seriously. Con Air knows its role. It's a shitty, action-packed, dumb blockbuster. And so it's mostly fun to watch. Mostly. Holy shit was he great in this movie. John Malkovich is great in basically every movie though. From serious dramas like The Glass Menagerie and Of Mice and Men. To action schlock time fodder bullshit like this movie to his performance and participation in the ever-weird being John Malkovich and Burn After Reading, and to his current starring role in Space Force. John Malkovich always brings it. Cyrus the Virus is a charismatic, intimidating villain, and a welcome antithesis to Nick Cage's terrible, terrible fucking portrayal of the movie's main protagonist. He comes off as an eccentric, borderline psycho, and the few moments where he actually does center himself and become serious are all the more intimidating and believable as a result. 
Malkovich Osiris is probably the most realistic thing about this whole movie. I always believed him and I appreciate his performance. It's bad. It's terrible. It's awful. It sucks. It's the worst. But I think it adds a level of camp to the movie in a so bad it's hilarious kind of accent. I can't think of a thing I'd like better than to put a bullet in the brain base of one of these fuckers. Now when I set out to make this review, I honestly thought there would be more pros, but this is it. I tried and I drew dead to come up with more. So let's move on to the, you know, <laughs> I listed this as a pro a second ago because of its unintentional hilarity, which provided me with quite a few laughs at, not with, the actor's expense. Better? Uh, bullet! Fuckers! You so I'm gonna show you good. Uh, Hooray for the sounds of fucking silence. That said, I'm pretty sure that this man received multiple millions of dollars to be in this movie. And he provided us for that money, for your money, if you bought a ticket, with perhaps one of the all-time worst movie accents in the history of movies or accents. If it's not the all-time worst, it is certainly in the top ten, possibly in the top five. And that, combined with his typical lukewarm acting chops, pisses me off. The movie begins with terrible fake southern accent receiving a lengthy prison sentence for killing a redneck who assaulted him and his wife in front of dozens, maybe hundreds of witnesses. Fake accent didn't necessarily mean to kill his attacker, but rather to defend himself and his pregnant wife against drunk redneck assailants with obvious malintent. I don't believe the beginning. I really don't. I think it's a bad catalyst to start this movie off. I know that Nick Cage needed to be on an airplane full of ruthless prisoners, but I think they could have found a better reason to stick his ass in jail. In a movie like Con Air, the plot is typically not the most important part. I think of a quote that John Carmack made regarding my favorite computer game of all time, and it goes like this. Story in a game is like story in a porn movie. It's expected to be there, but it's not that important. The plot in Con Air is simple enough. A bunch of criminals take over a prison transport plane, people get into gun battles, there are explosions, John Malkovich has a bunch of funny shit, and the audience gets their money's worth and exactly what they expected. If they had just left it at that, then this negative would not be in the review. Instead, we get... Diabetes Man. This dude is as ancillary as ancillary characters come, existing only to have diabetes and to give terrible fake southern accents something additional to worry about. He's on the plane. Diabetes man, that is. He's on the plane. He has diabetes. He gets shot by Cyrus. And after the plane crashes, he gets loaded up into an ambulance. And probably gets sent back to prison. But you know what? Who gives a shit? Completely unnecessary pull-off thread. Played by Steve Buscemi. His character's name is actually Garland Green. And he's supposedly this, like, terrifying serial murderer who, quote, makes the Manson family look like the Partridge family. Although, he doesn't look the slightest bit scary, creepy, psychopathic, or murderous to me. If anything, he looks bored. A lot like Nick Cage in this epic explosion scene. That's some great acting there, terrible southern accent. Anyhow, he like Diabetes Man, has no real function. And had he not appeared in the movie at all, absolutely nothing regarding the main story would have been affected. We don't actually know what happens to him after the plane crashes, right? But again, Who cares? Chekhov is rolling in his grave, goddammit. These two items were almost certainly added to disguise the otherwise one-dimensional, flaccid, paper-thin plot that should have been enough, a.k.a. their bullshit. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about Con Air. It's a mostly fun, dumb, textbook example of a 90s action blockbuster. I certainly don't hate it, but I gotta be honest with you guys, it got really old going through this movie to make the review. 
and I'm probably not going to watch it again for some time, you know, unless a friend pops it in or wants to watch it with me or something like that. Now, if you haven't seen it, or if it's been a while, and you have access to a copy, then fuck it. Make some popcorn, open up a cold beer, put up your feet, and give it a watch. Thank you very much for checking out my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.